the two brothers was in the field. I don't know what the conversation was, and I don't understand even why it was still on Cain's mind. Because God already told him, he said, listen, man, if you get your stuff together, then guess what? Everything's going to be okay next time. But for some reason, that wasn't good enough for Cain. Cain was still caught up on that his brother outdid him during sacrificial time. And so now he slew his brother. He took his life. Now this right here kind of messed me up right here because when God came to Cain, he said, hey, hey, little homie, where your brother at? He said, how should I know? Something came to me that God must appear in a similar likeness for him not to get the respect. How you gonna tell God you don't know when God created you and everything thereof? How can you lie to God Almighty? So he told God he didn't know where his brother was. He said, he said, guess what? Check this out. Your brother blood is crying from the ground. And it was at that moment he said, oh, dude, I, I've been busted. That guy ever been busted on something? Yeah. I've been busted plenty of times. Not once, yeah. plenty of times. Yeah. And God busted him out and said, listen, dude, no, 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 no. You took your brother's life. Yeah. The ground is talking to me. The ground is telling me what's going on, what happened in the field. Yeah. That's why the Bible tells us if we don't praise God, the rocks gonna cry out. You do know that your walls can talk at your house. Why do you think the Bible says that the name, everything that got a name is subject to the name of Jesus Christ? Meaning the God said, Wall, what happened on such and such a day? Wall was there on and that wall would drop a dime. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Gonna tell it all. He gonna tell it all. <laughs> and then I'm gonna punch that wall right in the right, right in the center of the jump. Pop, shut up, wall. God ain't supposed to know all that. <laughs> but then God told him, he said, listen. He said, dude, you cursed. And it was at that moment that God said to him, God, God not only for the first time, he didn't have respect for his offering. But now God is disciplining him. Now God is sitting there, uh, uh, what's that, uh, banishing him, telling him, you got to go for what you did. And it was at that point that Cain began to have panic attacks. Have you ever had a panic attack just the thought that God is not with you sometimes? I remember one time I got afraid. I said, God, are you with me? Are you here? You know, David talked about as a deer. Panting towards the water. Panting towards the water. So my soul what? Panting for who? Breathing for God. He said, God, I need you. I'm thirsting for you. I'm thirsting for you. I'm thirsting for you. I saw this girl uh, tell you one day. She said, you just a thirsty dude. Ain't you? So, mm. I'm thirsty for God like that. You know what I'm saying? When I see, when I come to my wife and I'm coming, I'm thirsting for her. I got the right to be thirsty for her. Right. Same equal, I got the right to be thirsty for God. And now Cain said, no, God, don't banish me like that. Yeah. No, 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 no. I didn't know that my act was going to cause all of this to take place. And for the first time in Cain's life, Pastor, he's now at a point where, guess what? He's pushed behind enemy lines. He pushed to a place he ain't never been before. Because he said, no, no, no. If you send me out there, people are going to kill me. You got, they going to kill me, Pastor. Meaning that there's no protection. I lost fellowship with you. And because I lost fellowship with you, that means that you're not going to protect me like you said that you was. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so Cain went through different emotions now because his life was about to change. He was pushed behind enemy lines. Now he got to fight when he didn't have to fight. I remember years ago, Cedric preached a message up in here, the rowboat and the motorboat. How many of y'all remember that? Either you can row the boat yourself and get you there longer, or you can ride with God and let him turn on the motor and let it. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's what 
we do sometimes when we don't trust God, when we don't do what God says, we sit there on that rowboat doing this. <laughs> I've been on that water out there in a canoe. My wife had a wild idea we need a family retreat, and she put us in all that water. <laughs> She asked my mom, you want to go? My mom said, no, baby, it's all right. <laughs> she was the only smart one. In a canoe. On that Mississippi. <laughs> but Cain began to panic. Because God told him, you're banished. You're out of here. And it was at the 14, look at 414. This is when everything become clear that everything that was about to take place. He said, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. Meaning my good life. Meaning that even that secret place that you, you, you know what I mean? You made for me and my family. Because number one, my daddy got us kicked out of Eden. So the place that you allowed us to go was a type of Eden. And now you kicking me out of that place? He said, out of this day from the face of the earth and from the face, he said, and from thy face shall I be here. He said, God, I can't, I can't, I can't live without seeing your face. See, now Cain is faced with that he got a fight. That's one thing that I tell kids, you know me, I remember as a kid, I'm like, I can't wait till I get grown. I can't wait till I get grown. I just couldn't wait till I get grown, but I didn't know that I had to pay bills when I got grown. I didn't know that I had to buy my own food. I had to buy my own drawers, my own socks. I didn't understand the, 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 the responsibility of that thing that I thought that I wanted. Do you hear what I'm saying? Man. And so Cain was tripping about his offering. And the only thing God told him is that get over it, baby. You get over it, everything will be cool. You don't get over it, all hell gonna break loose on you. So mean because he didn't set his mind right. That's what the Bible tells us what? Let this mind be in who? In you. My neighbor? You. Somebody else? You. Meaning that it's supposed to be personal. Let this, this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Meaning that our mind's supposed to be regulated. See, for some reason, Cain just had a crazy moment that we all can identify with. And now he's fighting in a place faster than he really wasn't prepared to fight. That's like putting me in the ring with Mike Tyson. I'm going to get killed it. You hear me? I'm going to get one or two punches and I'm going to run around the ring. I'm going to let you know. I'm not going to take them punches from Mike Tyson. But I'm going to get one or two before I die. <laughs> Meaning that I wasn't prepared for that arena. And so now we're fighting behind enemy lines. And anytime you find yourself fighting behind enemy lines, either two things gonna happen. You gonna be, you gonna win, you gonna lose. Ain't no shaking at the heat. I remember back in the day, Pastor, when we used, you know, people used to fight. After you get done, you shake your hand, okay man, we square it up, you won. Hey, uh-uh, that ain't going on these days. Yeah, that's why right. people can't take taking no buck with them. I can take one of them up, but I came from that generation. It didn't have to let's say, man, come on, let's go play some basketball or let's go get some meat. I'm not gonna take your life, not unless you threaten their life. Me, I don't worry about me. I'm cool. Now you mess with them, then that's when you gotta deal with me. You gotta do my alter ego is what they call it. <laughs> You don't want to know him. You're crazy. No. <laughs> but he said, Behold, thou hast driven me out from this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. 
and I shall be a fugitive, meaning that God, now I'm on America's most wanted list. Have you ever seen people that didn't like you just because you just walked in the room and they just didn't like you? They didn't, they didn't, they didn't even know you, but they just don't like you. Meaning that there was something about you they didn't know. He said, dude, I don't want to be him. I don't want to be him. I like being liked. I like being cool. I don't want what he got because he said, God, you turned the world against me when I did what I did. Now I'm fighting. See, the thing that I'm trying to get across here is, is that, that our actions have consequences. And then it calls us, we got to be fighting when we don't have to fight. We have, we're going through stuff that we just don't have to go through. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we're not looking at what we're doing. I think about what we're doing. At 52 years old, I'm learning to judge things. Is it, is, is it an asset or is it a liability? I always say liabilities give you temporary satisfaction. Temporary. Meaning when an old girl passed my eyes and she looking sweeter than candy, and I go, oh, Jesus. Is she an asset or a liability? Because number one, she don't belong to me. She's not in covenant with me. Because although it look good, you don't know what diseases may be lurking at my door. But an asset is something that initially I don't see the benefits of. It prolongs, it goes through time. I remember I had a, 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 a savings bond as you. I was so happy to get the savings bond, but just as fast as I was happy to get the savings bond, I was trying to get it off me. I wanted that money. <laughs> but when I took it to the bank, they didn't want to give me the value of the face value of it. I didn't understand about that. That that it did what? Mature. It did mature. Right. That's how life is sometimes. God wants us to start judging things, even purchases, even things we do, Pastor Mona. We got to think of is this going to be an asset? Or is this going to be a liability? Right. I don't care how you ride. I don't care how you living. Uh, how can I live right now and keep it rolling? Right. Do you hear what I'm saying? Man. Yeah. See, so Cain was looking at a situation. Cain was looking at, you know what I mean, that God, God rejected him. Just because he rejected you this time, next time he wasn't gone. Just make sure you fatten it up, you double up on yours. Because the Bible said that what? Abel did what? He gave, and then he gave, he put some extra stuff on that extra stuff. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever had somebody that fix your plate and you look at it like, what's that? <laughs> but then when somebody, when they come back and fix your plate another time, you're like, yeah, yeah, hey, girl, you knew what you were doing. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how they with God. Man, God get excited about Abel's stuff. So next time God said, baby, I get excited about yours too. Just make sure your heart is right. Mm 